Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, and I will be presenting to you the ambiguous case triangle. Ambiguous case means that there is more than one solution, or there's two solutions in this case. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is uh, check to see if we have an ambiguous case. An ambiguous case happens when two sides of a triangle is given and an angle opposite. So we have to have two sides and an angle given. The angle has to be opposite one of the sides. Then we'll run the check to see if we have the right conditions for an ambiguous case. Well, if the side opposite the angle is shorter than the other given side, there's a probability or a possibility that there's an ambiguous case. When I say there's a probability of an ambiguous case, uh, there's other situation that could happen. We could have no triangle at all, we could have a right triangle, or we could have two solutions or two triangles okay so let's go and uh, look at this some 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 actual information we're given here three piece of information for a triangle and we could see that uh, we have an angle and two sides angle a and side a so we have an a side opposite that particular angle that's what we have now we have to run our check the side opposite the angle, is it shorter than the other given side? Well, if it is, there's a possibility of this being an ambiguous case. We have two other scenarios that could happen. We could have no triangle at all, or we could have a right triangle, and then we could have an ambiguous case. Okay, let's go and look at this from a, a diagram point of view. The information that we're given is this angle here. We have the side opposite, and we have another given side. So I've set this up. Um, you'll have to resolve how you're going to draw the triangle. When we look at this, the side opposite the angle is shorter than the other given side. So we have a possibility of an ambiguous case. But we need to run some checks. If this side happens to be shorter than the perpendicular that happens here, the perpendicular that happens here, then we don't have a closed figure and it won't be a triangle. If it is exactly the length of the perpendicular, then we'll have a right triangle. So we need to calculate the perpendicular. Let's imagine that we have a perpendicular here and we need to, it'll be, it'll be a right triangle, we need to calculate the perpendicular. Opposite over hypotenuse will be the sine function and of course when you resolve that, you will get 18.9. So again, We've uh, solved for the perpendicular. It is 18.9 centimeters. Okay. Let's uh, let's look. If this side was shorter, say it was 15 rather than 18, um, 23.6. If it was 15, it would be shorter than the perpendicular. This would not be a triangle. It would not be a triangle because it's not closed. Now. The other thing is that if this side happened to be 18.9 exactly, then we would have a right triangle happening in there. Right? We would have a right triangle. And that would not result in an ambiguous case again. You would just have a right triangle just uh, solve for that. Okay. Now the last uh, scenario that we have is that we have a side that is longer or shorter than the other given side, but longer than the perpendicular here. Right? So we have it longer than the perpendicular. Really, it'll swing right through and land in there for the second case. Okay? When we look at this, 23.6 and 23.6, so we know that these two sides are the same length. Anytime that we have two sides that are the same length in a triangle, we call it an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle really have some unique features to it. If we were to drop a perpendicular right down here, we would cut it in exactly two right triangles. Also, the two base angles right there will be equal to each other. Okay? And this perpendicular would bisect that angle right in there and it would cut this length AB or BB, sorry, directly in half. Okay? So the more important thing for this type of problem that we realize that we have an isosceles triangle and these angles in here, the base angles are equal to each other. So if we solve for one, 
we know the other one okay let's uh, let's go and uh, look at the, this scenario we have the two triangles we have the large triangle which is the black triangle and then we have a smaller triangle so this is definitely an ambiguous case we have two solution from the same set of information the reason why it has to uh, it could be two solution there was no angle given in here for from the given information and there was no length of this side so it could have been it could be this situation or this situation because there's no governing measurement that uh, stops us from swinging this in or swinging that side out okay the first thing that we have to do is solve for the larger triangle the, the, the darker or the black triangle we have to solve for that first let's go and uh, set up uh, sine law because uh, we cannot use sine cos and tangent or Pythagoras theorem this is not a right triangle it is not a right triangle so we can't use those uh, to solve it but we could use sine law and like I mentioned before sine law is based on the proportionality of the side opposite the angle or vice versa. We could set up uh, a couple of ratios here with sine law. This I'm going to set up as the numerator and this the sine of this angle will be in the denominator and the second uh, ratio that I'll set up is 25.7 in the numerator and the sine of angle B in the denominator. Now I could equal these to each other because it's the same triangle and it's just the rules that we use. Let's go and uh, solve case one. This is case one right here. Okay, we're going to go and solve that. I already explained that we're going to set up the ratio for it. I'm going to use known information as much as possible. As you could see, I put a, a red mark here around this as known information. 23.6 divided by sine of 47.3. Let's go backwards. 23.6 is the numerator. Sine of 47.3 is the denominator. I'm going to go and set up the second ratio now. And the second ratio is the side, side B, 25.7, divided by the sine of side B. Okay. When I resolve that, when I solve for that, I'm going to get uh, angle B is going to be 53.2 degrees. Now, if I know that this is 53.2, it is fairly simple to solve for this angle C here. We know that the interior angle of a, uh, of a triangle is 180 degrees, so I could subtract this and this from 180 and get that one. And that's the next calculation right here. Angle C, 180 minus two angles will give you 79.5 degrees. So I have all three of the interior angle solve for. Let's go and look what else is missing. We have this, this, and that. We have these two sides. Oh, look at that. We got to solve for side C. So I'm going to use known information to create my ratio in sine law again. I'm going to use known information. And now that I know this, uh, this angle in here, angle C, I could set up the ratio to solve for side C. And that's what I did here. If you notice, the ratio is the same. Okay, and I have side C in the numerator and angle on uh, the sine of angle C in the denominator. When I resolve that, I'm going to get uh, the length of side C of 31.6 centimeters. Okay, so now, now I have all of the interior angle, all three of the interior angle, and I have all three of the sides. Okay, this is case one. Okay, we still have the second case which is the smaller triangle to solve. Okay, let's go and uh, deal with case two. Remember I swung that, uh, that leg of that triangle right in here. Swung the leg of the triangle. It remains the same length that was given. Okay, the other thing that I have to remember is that in the large triangle, the angle over here was 53.2 degrees, right? isosceles triangle this base angle will be the same so if I want to solve for angle B in this smaller triangle now I have to subtract 53.2 from 180 degrees I will get the interior angle and once I get this interior angle it's easy to get that interior angle 
uh, our angle C for this one. Okay, that would be. Um, let's go and look at the calculation. I've subtract that and solve for angle B. We have angle B as 126.8. To solve for angle C, I'm going to subtract 126.8 and 47.3 from 180, and I will get 5.9 degrees. So let's go and look at that. We have uh, 5.9 degrees for up here, and 126.8 right in here. Okay, so I have all three of my interior angles now. The other thing that I have to go and solve for is C prime, or the smaller side of uh, C. And I'm going to use the same ratio. It's known information right there. And now that I have side, um, angle C, I could create a ratio for solving side C. And that's what's done right in here again. The ratio is set up, and you solve for C prime. So I have more or less all of the information that I of the two cases that I, I needed to solve. I have all three interior angle for the large situ uh, large triangle and all of the three sides and for the smaller triangle I have one, two, three interior angle, one, two, three sides. I am now finished with this problem and all of the interior angle, if you were to add this interior angle to that one, to this one, it should add up to 180 and if I add up this, this, and this angle in the small triangle, it should add up to 180. That's just a, a mental check. And that is the end of this problem. I hope that this uh, demonstration helps you with your studies and keep on uh, studying so that you could get better marks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.